Welcome to week three with UQCS. I recognize a few of these faces around the room. So you've probably been to one of our other three events this week. So it's been a very hectic week. So thanks for coming to the third one. Um, so today, actually, we have a very exciting event with Miles, who will be teaching you guys all about game dev. So um, if you haven't already downloaded Unity on your computer, um, you should probably look into doing that. Do you have a slide on Unity? I've got slides ready to go. All right, awesome, yeah. So, yeah, but yeah, I'll leave it to Miles to take it away. Um, and yeah, pizza will be arriving about 6.30 after the workshop. So yeah, we'll see you guys then. Okay, <clears throat> so yeah, obviously my name's Miles. Most of you probably have read my name somewhere. I know I recognize a few face out there. Fantastic turnout, really excited to, to be doing this. Uh, I do this for fun. Also, I'm allegedly a professional game developer because I get paid to do that, so, so there you go. Uh, that's about me. I'm studying teaching and physics here. I'm going to move it onto the, the, the PC to show the slides. Onto the PC. Yeah, distract from your laptop onto It is... Just, yeah, go back to the screens now. I'll try to figure okay. it out. So if anyone is on the stream, I apologize. Uh, you're not seeing the slides. But the slides aren't important because I'll we'll be switching over to a live display in Unity uh, in a minute. So yeah, I'm doing teaching in physics, which is more or less the perfect combination to do game dev in terms of the skills required. I imagine most people here are doing some kind of EAIT degree. Um, that's cool. There's important skills in there too. Uh, so, yeah, before we kick off, I'd like to get a quick feel for the room. Hands up, everyone here who's a first year. Awesome, so maybe, maybe like, like a third, that's pretty cool, yeah. Hands up, everyone who's a second year. Yeah, nice, I'm assuming everyone else is third year plus, hands up. Yeah, last third, that's a really nice split, that's a really nice split. So. Um, we're going to need a little bit of coding experience, or at least a little bit of exposure to coding. Uh, how many people here have used C Sharp before? Alright, yeah, cool, about maybe half or two thirds, that's good. And finally, how many people here have used Unity before? Maybe like, maybe like a third. Okay, cool. Yeah, well this is going to be complete back to basics kind of thing, so we'll go through and I'll I'll show you all my GitHub in a minute where I've uploaded all the scripts that I wrote in advance. So at any time, if you're falling behind or you're in a race head, you can just go in and just copy the scripts and it should just run. So that's so you'll be able to use that. Um, I'm going to assume everyone here knows what GitHub is. So you can go to here and Unity UQCS should be a public repo and those are the five C sharp scripts there. So bookmark that, I'll go there if you want to do that. So jumping back to the slides, yeah, uh, let's get into it. So what, what are we going to do? We're going to make a 3D platformer with shooting and with moving enemies. And allegedly the enemies are going to die. So that's kind of like your, your basic of a game, right? And then the first thing you got to figure out, what is a game? Well, a game has game, gameplay, it has goals. And most games, you can win all this. So we're going to do a little bit of basic physics, a little bit of UI stuff. There's been some player controls, and we do a little bit of artwork and texturing. It's all going to be super basic stuff, though. Unity makes this really easy. So let's get started with Unity. I'm assuming by this point everyone has got Unity installed and open, or else you were planning to not do that and just watch. That's cool too, whatever. <laughs> so uh, if anyone has questions at any point, please just chuck your hand up or, or even just shout out. This is meant to be more of a workshop or a tutorial kind of thing not so much a presentation, so my idea was I'll be going through and also be like live coding and doing this stuff as we go. So uh, Unity has what I call object-oriented autism, where uh, there's good and there's ga uh, bad pr uh, coding practices for doing object-oriented stuff, and Unity does it in a way which is uh, not necessarily 
amazing. So, uh, let me just pull this one up. Oh, that's got to reload. So, uh, in in the in the Unity scene, there is what's called a hierarchy of objects, where everything is nested with everything else. So, if we have a look here, and this is all the finished stuff, so just open that. So, up on the top left is the the hierarchy here, and you see all the stuff. So, this is the stuff that's actually in the world. So this is the stuff that has what we call a transform, which means it's located somewhere physically in the world. And what we can do is we all nest stuff. So Unity just nests all of these transforms together. So if we go up here to the player capsule and you click a little arrow, then you'll see there's stuff in there too. So to, to demonstrate this, what I'll get everyone to do is just to, uh, in your Unity, give me a sec while I just delete all this stuff. Hey? Mm, I can go into like high visibility mode. Is that hard to see for everyone? It's basically up here in the top left corner here in that big box there. This is just this is the default layout, so uh, hopefully everyone should be seeing something pretty similar to this. Ah, oh, great, yeah, lighting. Yeah, okay, so this is uh, so I've deleted all the stuff now. This is just the default scene. Now you should have a light and a camera. And what I'm gonna do is gonna right click up there and then create a 3D object. We're gonna make a capsule. So everyone just follow along with this. I'm gonna call it the uh, player capsule. The so capsule is like the Unity pill, it's just a classic. We use this to represent humanoids. It's the most simple basic thing. Now, uh, we can actually, when you nest stuff together, um, for those of you who, question? Um, so Matt, I'm just making the project now. Yes. The 3D core? Yes, sorry, 3D core. So new project and 3D core. Okay. Right, actually, I should probably check as well. Has everyone jumped into making a new 3D project or is anyone still on that point? Yep. Right. Well, we'll go super slow for this next bit. So you've got your capsule and then all we're going to do is we're going to drag the main camera on top of the capsule and then that's actually going to attach it or nest it underneath it. So you can see now there's a little drop down on the player capsule and the camera's there. So what this does is uh, it does some funky math stuff where essentially the camera is attached to the capsule now. So whenever the capsule moves or the capsule turns or does anything, the camera has all those transformations applied to it as well. And so uh, if you go off and do calculus and linear algebra, which is probably a large portion of you, then you'll look at in depth all the math for that. Unity does it under the hood. So you have the option of doing all that math in Unity, but you don't need to. Unity has shortcuts for all of this, which is why it's so great and fun. So to give you an example here, I'm just gonna move the capsule around and then the camera will actually move with it. So the camera is, is that big sort of uh, triangular prism there. So you, now you see how they're both moving together, both the capsule and the camera. So that's, that's pretty much what I call object-oriented autism. Because you can go as deeply as you want. Yeah. So that's, that's pretty much the first step. So the other main parts of the UI, on the right is what we call the inspector. So that's when you actually click on something in the world, then in the inspector over there on the right, you'll see all the, all the info on it, so it's useful, and you'll be looking through that a lot, and we'll be using that a little bit. The last thing in the UI I wanna show off is right down the bottom here, where it says assets. So this is the actual files that we're using in our project. So this is where we put our code files, this is where we put our art, this is where we put our 3D models and all that stuff. So you can see I've got some scripts down there ready to go, but we'll, we'll go through that and we'll create them as we go. So, that's, uh, that's pretty much getting set up with Unity. Does anyone have any questions at this point? Awesome, well, let's make some stuff in the world then. So we've got our player capsule there. Now let's make a plane. So we've actually got something in the world. So go to th create a 3D object in the hierarchy and then select plane here. And it's just gonna be like a big old square. Now this is actually a, uh, this is a pretty interesting object. It's only got one face. So if we go underneath it, it'll actually be invisible. Pretty cool. So little little rendering trick there. We want to make this much much bigger though. So when you create it, it's automatically selected. So over here in the inspector on the right, we can see all the information about this plane. The plane is like a big square. So what we want to do is go to the scale here, and we're going to change that to be massive, 100. So you see how on the um, on the red axis there, it just like it's just like a row now. It's just huge. So we're going to do the same thing for the the z axis as well. 
So that's our horizontal plane. And um, I'm going to try and minimize using any kind of math terminology or stuff, but because um, there's probably a few people here who are new to that or, or not super confident, but there will be a little bit of stuff. So we got a basically an XZ plane there. Now we want this to be this is our this is our ground level basically. So we want the player to start above the ground. So I'm just going to move that plane down a little bit so it's actually below the player. Yep, there we go. And there's our player there. I'm just going to zoom right in or move rather. So we got a little play here, and the player is now above the ground. And so what we're going to do now, I think it's time to create some scripts. Oh no, hang on, one last thing. So, um, super quick point, if you've used C-sharp before, you've probably used Visual Studio, or maybe some other variant of an IDE. Uh, that's, that's a pretty good idea. I would recommend using Visual Studio if you're familiar with that and comfortable with that. I'll just be using Notepad++ here. So if you don't know, um, just go with, you can just use Notepad, that's fine. Notepad++ is really, really nice though, because it's got syntax highlighting. And um, you know, if anyone here is on Linux, is anyone here using Linux for this? Nice, very nice. So you're probably using Vim or something or whatever. So yeah, there's all kinds of other cursed options for your uh, IDE. But I'll be using Notepad, so whatever, that's fine. All right, uh, let's go. Next slide. Okay, we're gonna do some coding now. So, we're gonna create a script. So if you go right down to the bottom to the assets and then you just right click and select create and then go C sharp script. Boom, click on that. And then call it player move. So this one here, and I'll open up this in a second and, and then we'll start going through it. So open up your player move script and uh, let's see what we got. Okay, so I'll just drag my script over so I can see. Yeah. So you just double click at it or right click and select open to open it. Um, so this is this is all the code that I wrote before. I'm just gonna delete that so I can do it live. Now. Unity uh, Unity does some um, does a whole lot of shortcuts. So when we create a new script, there's going to be some code in here. Like this is this is the code you're going to see, which is already created, and it's going to be called the name of our file. I think the text is bigger. I think it's going to have that. We got we got code, guys. Here we are. So this is the name of your file. I put mine play move new. You guys will be play move or whatever. Now. For those of you who are just starting out in your coding journey, there's this wonderful thing called object-oriented, which I mentioned before. It's very important, it's very cool. We'll be doing a lot of it, so I'll, I'll try and give you basically a crash course. For those of you who are a bit more experienced, um, if you've done Java or uh, like some more advanced JavaScript and Python stuff, then yeah, you probably be familiar with object-oriented. So um, the motto behavior, here basically means there's a whole bunch of Unity stuff running under the hood, making things easy for us. So a whole bunch of pre-written code which is coming in here, which we're going to use a heap of. So there's two bits of pre-written code here, which we're going to use. There's the start function and the update function. So just a super quick reminder, a function is just a bunch of code that we've pre-written somewhere and saved together, and we're going to reuse a few times. So just like the comments there, start, we put in our, our setup code, so we initialize our variables, and then update just runs constantly. So we put most of our sort of game code in the update function. Now, for our player controls, we're gonna need to be checking constantly if the player is actually interacting. And there's a few different ways to do the input polling, but this is gonna be super easy. We're gonna do a slightly dodgy version, and we're just gonna check if uh, in every frame, we're just going to check if the player has, checked, has actually pressed the keys. So the way we do that in, or one way we can do that in Unity is with input.getAxis. So in update, and you can just go in and copy this from my GitHub if you want. We're going in, we're typing input.getAxis, and we're going vertical. Now vertical is your X plane, I believe. So we're just checking if there's a key which is positive in the X plane. Now, big Unity shortcut here. Um, Unity is actually under the hood, this vertical axis, it's actually checking for the W key or the up key or, or the S key or the down key. So again, big shortcut here, if you're actually working in a lower level language like C++ or just like a, a native C-sharp engine or your own rendering engine, 
then there's, you're going to have to write heaps of this code, which you need to just doing it for us here. So,
I didn't commit the change. Hang on. I haven't, I've never used the um, web UI for this before. Drag and upload. I'll just hit commit and then it should be able to refresh. All right, pick your F5s and then jump in there. So player move is the full one, player move new is the empty file, so I can probably delete that, I think. All right, so let's have a look at this in game with our forward, backward, left and right. So we're going, oh yeah, oh yeah, check that out. Oh, that's some gameplay, guys. That's some gameplay right there. It's game of the year, 2023. Yeah, so those controls are really clunky. It feels awful, it looks awful. Whatever, this basic tutorial, so what you'll find that Unity takes a lot of shortcuts and, um, and the way I did it here is a fairly basic way to do it. So if you want to make things look and feel nicer, you'll you, you want to customise that a lot. You'll want to forget the shortcuts and actually get into, probably get into the math of doing it, um, do a lot more stuff under the hood. There's ways you can play with that to make it feel much nicer. Okay, so yeah, let's if if everyone's cool with that, let's uh, let's move on to the the next thing, which is actually going to be jumping. Oh yeah, okay. So challenge mode, add a jetpack. Yeah, cool, whatever. So for your jumping, yeah. Question. Uh, well, I was just going to say, um, how do you like test out the movement? Ah, oh, thank you. That's a really good point. That's a really important point. So we okay, so we put our code in there. I'm getting ahead of myself. There's a little play button right here up at the top. That button actually launches your game. <laughs> so you've got to you gotta hit that play button right at the top to, to launch it and then you can start testing it. Okay. So once you've got something moving there, um, so let's let's move on to jumping now. So jumping is really really similar. We're just gonna do get access jump. So we want to check that's not zero. So this is actually a shortcut for the uh, space key. And all we're gonna do is we've actually added a physics thing. We're gonna add force. So physics is pr uh, a good a good handle on physics is fairly important for games for some kind of games at least. Definitely for this kind of game. And you probably won't need to know much more than basic first year kinematics. But yeah, so essentially we're just adding an impulse, a bunch of force, and just kind of boom, jump in the air. But before we can, um, so we can, we can write that code in and that's cool. And I'll go back and we'll go through that in detail in a sec. But before that, this code can actually work, the thing we've got to do is we've got to actually enable physics on our player capsule. So the way we do that is we can do that with rigid bodies. So go back into the game, select your player capsule, and then we're gonna go add component, rigid body, boom. So this is the thing which actually enables physics in our game. Now, uh, there's a bunch of settings there. We wanna make sure gravity is on, and we um, probably freeze rotation there. And I'm gonna set mass to five, because that was just a nice setting that I found. Now, once you've done that, then we're going to actually need to interact with this rigid body. So if we go back to the code, um, we'll actually see that there's a variable up here to hold our rigid body. And so I'm making these, try and make all your, all your variables public, because that way they have to be public so that you can see them in the editor. So where it says public rigid body, that way in the editor we can actually see what the value is. So once you've got your rigid body added, and then now player move script, you'll see here the variable rigid body. That's what we call it, and because we've made that variable public. Now what we want to do is uh, there's a couple of ways we can do this. Unity has a really fun thing. One second, where we can actually uh, edit those variables live here in the inspector. So we want to reference this rigid body, so I'm just going to drag it over into the variable slot. Boom. And there's ways we can do this in code as well. Question? Sorry, can I ask how you add the rigid body again? I missed the bit where you drag. It's just like we create objects in the hierarchy. We go down to the bottom here in the area and hit add component. Right. And then okay. there's a little search bar there, rigid. I typed in rigid. 
for our rigid, we want the 3D rigid body because we're doing a 3D game. You can also, um, no you can't it, okay, whatever. So all of this stuff, so this is all cool and fun. Unity lets you do drag and drop stuff, that's great. You can also do all of this through code as well. So Unity makes things easy. Lots of shortcuts. Uh, you'll, you'll find that once you get more of a handle on it, you'll probably be doing more stuff in code versus in the editor. But it, it's kind of like personal preference what your workflow is. So jumping back to our move script, we've got our rigid body variable. Now in the editor, you should have uh, dragged the rigid body in. So we've actually set the variable to this rigid body component so that we can play with it in the code because we want to do stuff with it. Now this line here in our start function, this is, the, this is doing exactly the same thing as we did in the inspector. This is doing it in code. So what we're doing here is we're setting the rigid body variable. We're actually grabbing it in code, get component, attach this game object of type rigid body, and then filling it in. So two ways to do things in Unity, through the inspector or through code. Really nice. Now I'm going to race on, and we're going to actually get to the force part. So you want to make sure that it's an impulse. And you want vector three dot up. So again, we're basically getting a um, positive positive z axis. I think it is. Yeah. yeah. Y axis, whatever. And so that again, that's relative to the transform. And we're gonna make it times five, and add the force. Now, um, the final other thing which is important to add is we only want to be able to jump when you're actually on the ground. So. Game dev is full of shortcuts, full of hacky, awful shortcuts. One really easy way you can check if the player is on the ground is if they're not, if they have no vertical velocity. So that's what this check is here. If we have no vertical velocity, as in if we're not moving up or down, then we can assume we're on the ground. Question? What if we're on the peak of our jump? Good question, and don't worry about that. Just pretend it's double jumping. <laughs> Basically, there's uh, the, the the way to do it properly would be to actually use properly use triggers and colliders and have a check whenever you collide, then set non ground variable with boolean. Yeah, yeah. But this is short and easy hack. And double jumping isn't that bad. It's, it's like a, it's like a gameplay choice, right? So let's test this. Uh, let's see what it does. Uh, oh, hang on. Um, I know, let's test it, whatever. So the player will immediately start falling because we've set gravity on. Cool. And the plane should also have physics. It's got a mesh collider. So we're now moving around, cool, and then space to jump. Awesome. Yeah. So we got movement, we got jumping. So how's everyone going here? Is everyone sort of following along or yeah? Yeah, we're all set up to date. And remember, if you fall behind or you go to race ahead, jump on the GitHub and start copying code there. Okay. So let's see what we got next. Uh, so yeah, add a jetpack mode, limited fuel if you want. That's probably a later thing because we're going to move on. We're going to take a brief break now to just play with uh, texturing and stuff. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to actually I'm going to actually jump onto Google and. I'm going to search for some grass textures. I don't really care if it's pretty or not, but uh, I'll get you guys to do this as well and grab a, sp grab a sprite of grass, not that one, and then save it because we're going we're gonna to need it in a second. And it can be, it can be beautiful, it can be crappy, it doesn't matter. That's the wrong format. We want a JPEG or like a PNG. Thank you. All right. So once you've got your grass texture, then we're going to go back to uh, drag it back into our project. So down in the assets, I've got some textures here, and oh, there's a grass texture I got earlier. But I'm going to go to my downloads folder. I'm just going to drag over that this new stock photo and load it in there. And cool. So we've got a couple of grass textures here now. And I'm just going to put, put one of those onto the plane. So our, our world, our ground has grass now. <laughs> it's that simple. So you just drag and drop. So you first want to get your image, your textures into the project by dragging them into the assets area down the bottom. Just go from your file explorer and drag it over. And then you can put your textures on your models by literally dragging them 
onto the models. So exactly the same thing works for our player capsule as well. Uh, we can just go drag it over and we've now got a grass person. Yeah. Now, there's another really dodgy hack here we can do, which is great with our nesting. We can actually uh, attach all kinds of extra objects. So I'm going to make a little cube man here. And he's now got a, a little head there. And, uh, and so when I move our player, then that head is going to move with him. You can make that a sphere or whatever. So um, if you want to, you play around with that. You can change the scale. Uh, if, if you're working a professional game dev, you probably actually have a dedicated modeler and artist who can actually make this look good. And so you wouldn't need to do this so much. But Unity gives you a lot of shortcuts and there's ways you can sort of get around in some cases uh, not having all that, the, the dedicated uh, art people. Okay. So yeah, um, using game object nesting, you can make little arms and a head and legs and stuff, and you can all, all interact with those in code and play with them as well. Okay, now let's uh, let's go to some more gameplay, and this is going to get a little bit wacky, but we're actually do shooting now. So uh, going back into our code, make a new script called player shoot. Um, so down in the assets at the bottom, right click and create and hit C sharp uh, script. Call it player shoot. I'm going to call this one player shoot new. And then jump into it and we're going to write some code. So, the again, we're using the, the shortcuts for Unity uh, here, here. Get access fire. So, fire three is shift in Unity. And you can override that and change that. This is just a, a nice little shortcut. And just like get access before, we're checking if it's greater than zero. And so when it does that, we're going to call a function called this.shoot. So again, a reminder of the functions a package of code that we wrote earlier, which we're going to want to repeat a lot. And so in it, and we put that in our update function. And here is our shoot function. So there's a bit of stuff here, which I'll go through step by step. So we've got a variable here called, this is the shooting cooldown. And uh, we want to make sure that that is actually greater than zero. So what I'll do is I'll actually just, um, yeah, no, I'll actually keep running through that. So shots left, this variable is an integer, and it's greater than zero. So if we go back up here, we've got uh, time left can shoot, and shoot cooldown, so one second, and then shots left, let's make that 10. And uh, every time, so every time we shoot, what's happening is we're resetting the cooldown, we're going down one shot, and then we're, this line here is where we actually create the board. So just making sure we've got this if check correctly, we want to check that time left can shoot is less than equal to a zero, so our cooldown is zero. Expired, we're off cooldown, and we've actually got greater than zero shots left. So, super quick check for you first years. We've got a couple of different variable types here. An integer is a whole number, very important to know that, and a float is a decimal, also very important to know that. And yeah, so those are our those are our sort of three main variables. Our cooldown here is one second. You can change that to whatever you want. Now, when you shoot. Uh, obviously your shots left, so minus minus means go down by one as a decrement, and then time left can shoot, we set that to the cooldown. So this is one second, remember. So we're resetting it, so that means every time the shoot function is called, if time left can shoot is greater than zero, it's not going to be able to shoot. So the, the, the big unity thing here, this is the one which kind of we got to go through. So the main, what we're doing is the main function we're calling is object.instantiate, and that just creates an object in the world using code. So this variable here, new bullet, we're actually saving it so we can do stuff with it later. But object.instantiate is really nice because it gives us a, um, the first argument is the object, is an object we're copying, which is like a template. The second argument is, out in this place, is the position we're actually sporting it. And then the third argument is the rotation that we're giving it when we spawn it. So there's a heap of uh, there's a heap of overloads for this function. So you can have different sets of arguments, but in this example code, this is the way I'm calling it, where we're creating a copy of the template and spawning it on the player position and the player transform. 
So you, that would probably be a good one to copy from the GitHub, that line. Just make sure you've got it. And uh, the, I guess the final big important thing is how do we, we actually have to set this template. That's pretty important. And so this is where some of the cool stuff for Unity really, really comes into play as a game engine. Uh, our ver we have a public variable up here, the bullet template. This is a variable on the player, and it starts off as null, so it has no value. And we're going to actually set this in the inspector. And um, I've done a few different ways. I've done this a few different ways, and I've found that the, the simplest, most straightforward way is you just create your template and you just assign it in the inspector, and, and that's easy. So I'm, I'm going to create a new 3D object to be our bullet, and I'm going to make a, a I think it's a cylinder. Yeah. I'm going to call it bullet template. And uh, where is it? There we go. Okay, so I'm going to rotate it like that. So in the inspector, you see the rotation here, our degrees, we're now at minus 90 on the z-axis. And I'm also going to change the scale a little bit just so that it's uh, more like the size of a bullet. And so you can see how that's automatically applied there. And our axes have flipped it because I've rotated it, right? So let's, it uh, doesn't matter where it goes in the world really. Um, and there's, there's stuff you can do in Unity to actually make it so the world isn't so cluttered and full of all your templates, but that's a little bit more advanced beyond the scope of this. So now going back to our player, we need to actually move our shooting script over to the player so that our player is able to shoot. So for your player shoot.cs down in the assets there, we grab that, drag it over, and drop it into the inspector with the player capsule selected. So the player will have the uh, player shoot script. Now you can see here our public variables in the player shoot script. Bullet template is number one, so it's none, because obviously we haven't put a value in there. So we're just gonna drag our bullet template over to fill in there. Boom, like that. So, our bullet template's there. Now at the moment, the bullet actually doesn't do anything. So what, I've, what we're gonna do now is actually write a super quick script to make the bullet actually fly forward. So make a new, new bullet.cs script down the bottom. We'll go into that. And literally all we're gonna do is just transform.translate and then go forward really, really fast. So our bullet gets created and it just goes pew, shoots forward. And this bullet script then needs to be on your template. So in our bullet template, we're going to drag the bullet.cs in the inspector. We select the bullet template, drag the bullet script over, and then what we should see is then as soon as we play, that bullet template is just going to fly away. Whoop, there it goes. That was really quick, but yeah, you can see it's got flying off at the distance. There it is. That's very far away. So our bullet is flying and uh, once you've got your shooting, so if you've got a player, uh, player shoot.cs, once you've got your shooting code in and ready to go, then we can test it. And so remembering the shoot key, uh, it's access fire three, which is the shift key. You should, um, I set in 10 shots left, cooldown of one second. So let's give that a test and we should, uh, we should see some shooting. Yeah, there it is. <laughs> Okay, so that bullet got rotated the wrong way. It might be a bit hard for you guys to see, but if you want, you can just make the bullet a bit bigger. And so, go back to our bullet template, we can change the scale back to one on all axes. And then when you shoot, it's just gonna spawn a log and it's just gonna fly away. So we're shooting logs now. <laughs> there you go. And so, I might, looks like I got the orientation wrong on that one. So, Let's play with that a little bit and see what happens. Cool. Whatever. Okay. So that's something to play around with your own time and get a feel for it. So whatever settings you apply on the bullet template, those are all being directly copied when you create it, when you instantiate it. So just remember that. And remember that in code you can change all the settings as well before or after you after you copy it. So the next, so if you've uh, got all this code here, then it should actually stop shooting when you hit zero. Because we've got this check here, shot select is greater than zero. So the last thing then is the reload code. And um, all this does is reset shots left, and then we'll do, the, we'll do the user interface stuff in a minute. 
first we've got to do our key check. So if the key down is R, then we're just going to call a reload function. Super simple. So key put, and so when you press the R key, then it should just reset the shots. Now, um, that's going to be really hard to see. Um, you can watch the inspector when you're actually testing it, which is a really neat thing Unity can do. And, uh, and there's a really, uh, a really annoyingly useful thing where if you're, if you're running a game, so this, the game tab here, which is what we see automatically, that's what the camera sees, right? But we can actually go back into the editor window and we can change all the variables. And because C Sharp has got this magic just-in-time debugging, we can change everything while the game is running which is cool and useful, but also super annoying if you, if you um, do it by accident, or you do something by accident. So the important thing to remember is that if, you're, if you've got your game running and you're making changes to variables in the inspector, those changes get reset when you stop running. So you can change variables while you're running to test things, but if you want something permanent, to make a permanent change, you have to do that when you're not running the game, basically. So that's a really important point to check. Now, uh, so, so here the game is running, right? And um, we can see here's, like here's this, this clone here up in the hierarchy on the left. Those are the two copies, two copies that we shot of the bullet. You can see in the top right, their position values are just going crazy, right? They're still flying off. We can just go, select this and go boom. And then it's just come back to the axis world axis, wherever it is. So we can literally change stuff mid-game. But that'll reset when we stop it. So good to remember that. And on the player capsule, if you do things like that on the player shoot script, there's eight shots left. So remembering that every time we shoot, that number's going down. So if you see in the inspector down here on the right, shots left is decreasing. And then obviously when it hits zero, we're gonna stop shooting. Yeah, boom. So. If that's all happening as expected, then cool. We've got gameplay now. We've got more gameplay. <laughs> so the, what we want, let's do the user interface now, because that's pretty important. We want our players to be able to actually, we want to give information to our players, right? We've got the heads up display. They want to see the magic amount of ammo and bullets they've got left. So Unity uh, is a little bit awkward about this, but it is a lot nicer in Unity than some other game engines you might work with. Uh, so all we're going to do is we're going to go to player capsule and right click and go down to UI and for this one uh, there's, there's a million ways you can do things but just for the sake of our tutorial we're going to make a go down to legacy and then select text and uh, and then you're going to see a new component pop up over here and there's a canvas thing don't worry about that so in text it says new text yeah cool whatever now, when we hit play, it should automatically just pop up as an overlay on the screen. Yeah, there it is there. So we can change that to whatever we want, and we can move that around as well. So I'm going to go back to the scene, and uh, where is it? Yeah, that's it up there. Yeah, Unity's got this really weird thing where it's put the UI into the world, and, uh, and yeah, and so we move around here. So that's a little bit awkward to see, but this is sort of head on here. And then you just move the transform. You just move the transform around like that. So this is this is the UI here. So let's put it up in the top left corner and then let's type it. Uh, test my UI text. And uh, let's see if the test works. Yeah, cool. We got UI now. Well done, guys. So yeah, um, basic Unity UI is is not amazing. Or not, not, not advanced, I should say. You've got, you've got text, there's buttons, there's sliders, there's images. You can animate stuff. You can um, set up render services. You can do some moderately advanced stuff. But because uh, Unity handholds you a lot of the way, once you get to more advanced or complex things, you'll find that you'll start to fight Unity a little bit. So Unity is great for knocking out prototypes really quickly or if you're getting started out and learning stuff. And so it might look great, it might be a little bit crude, but it works nicely for what it is. So the thing we want to do now is we've got static text floating there on the screen for the player. How do we actually change that? So let's do that in code. And we're going to do that the same way that we did the rigid body, where we've got a variable up here to actually hold the text object. So we're calling it unityengine.ui.text. So for those of you who are pretty comfortable with object-oriented, uh, we're essentially got a couple of namespaces here which we've got to get into in order to actually access the text type. 
if you don't know what that means, don't worry about it, just copy this. And you'll learn about it, whatever, next year or something, when you do, I don't know, CSSE 2010. Uh, so we're gonna, we, it's very important we make this public so that we can access it in the inspector because we need to actually set this variable in the inspector. So I've called it UI ammo, and if we go back and then select our player, so remember that the, this variable is in the player shoot script. So we select our player capsule, go down to player shoot, and then our variable there is called UI ammo. So you can see it starts out as empty. So that over here in our hierarchy to the left, we've got our legacy text, and we want to drag that over to the inspector and boom, drop it into the variable. It's, it's drag and drop coding, guys. That's, that's what it is. So now we can actually do stuff with that now that it's filled in. So going back to our thing, it's as simple as here in the start function, remember this calls at the start of the game, we just go our variable dot text and then we set it to ammo left and then we do it we, we do that string concatenation which you guys might have done in C sharp or JavaScript with the indexing and great, great fun. And you just go plus and then the number. So super easy. And then that should actually, now that we've actually set that, that should actually apply in game. Yeah, there we go. I'm over left 10. Now, remembering that when we unpause, that's going to reset. So now it says in the editor here, when we're out of the game, it shows the default value, which is test my UI text. But when we hit play, the code runs and actually applies the value and puts it in there. So now we've got our dynamic UI going. And the last thing we want to do is make that actually update when we shoot. So again, in the, uh, in the shooting function, we literally just set it, what's the new value of shots left? Well, it's gone down by one, so we change the text string. And then our reload function, again, we do the same. We need to make sure we change it again there. So now when we shoot, we should see the number changing. And when we reload and press R, we should also see the number changing. Yeah, cool, there it is. And, and then it resets as well. Uh, now there's a really nice, there's one other very, very useful thing which Unity does, um, which I probably should have mentioned before now, but I was kind of racing through this. Uh, when, when you do debugging and when you're doing coding and something goes wrong, we've got to debug it. And the first thing we do when we're debugging is have some kind of text printout onto a console or a log where we can actually read it. Uh, that's really useful and when you can't do that or you, you can't figure out how to do that, it's really, really annoying. So the way to do that in Unity is you go, you type console.log and then you, in here you can just put in your string. So this is a debug message. And you can also embed values and, um, and game objects and stuff into there too. But generally you just want to be putting in text strings. And so, so for example, if I've got a massive function which I'm debugging, I'll put in 10 or 20 of these at different points in the function. And so in the console log when my, when my program runs, I'll see it print out the different checks, so I can actually follow the logic flow of the program execution. Now, if you've got, if you're doing like like C++ or um, JavaScript, can do this as well. A few other languages, you can actually um, you can actually set breakpoints and you can follow the execution paths. So you won't need to do that, but um, this is this is one technique. So in Unity, the console log is by default down the bottom. So if we go down to the bottom here into our assets window and you click the console tab. This is where our messages and our warnings and our errors pop up. So my, I'm going to actually move this down to the shooting code. So, uh, so then what happens is I'm going to say we are shooting now. And then you can see a little message pop up. Sorry, that should be debug.log. We're doing a lot of JavaScript lately. Go, go, go. Yeah, there we go. All right, and so then you, every time you shoot, you should see that message pop up, and whoa, there it is. So obviously your um, your fire button is triggering multiple times a frame, it, like whatever the polling rate in Unity is. So the debug message is tr triggering like 30 times a second or 60 a second or something. So that's why the console log is filling up there. So that's really useful, and use that, use that all the time. Can't stress enough. Do good debugging. Um, put your debug messages out. Now, so it, 
if everyone's sort of following along at home and been going really, really quickly through this stuff, um, but everyone following along at home, or if you're watching back on the recording or work through this in your own time, then so far what we've got is we've got movement and we've got shooting and we've got jumping. Uh, what else have we got? We got some platforms. Oh, we haven't put in platforms yet. We got collision, but no platforms. So let's quickly put in some platforms for the player to jump on, because um, that's that's fun and important. We're making a three D platformer. So where's up? Yo, where are you? Yeah, cool. Alright, so now I'm going to make some platforms to jump on. So go down to create three objects, make it a cube. Now, the, the easiest thing to do here is just play with the scale. So let's go into the X scale and make that 5, and then the uh, Y, uh, Z scale and make that 3. So we've got 5 units long and 3 units wide, and there's our, there's a platform. Um, I might make it a little bit thinner. Yeah, there we go. So when you're making your own platform, like there's there's heaps of conventions and heaps of history with platform games. There's 2D platformers, there's 3D platformers. Like you guys are probably pretty familiar. Or if not, if you're making a if you're making a platform game, get familiar with platformers. You know, play games as research. It's important. And and so you're gonna feel for like the kind of game design conventions. This isn't a game design tutorial. I could run those, but we're just doing the tech now. So. We've made a nice little platform there, and uh, and it's got a box collider, and so Unity is cool, and and things just work. So we should actually have our collision now working when we try and walk into that. Yeah, yeah. See, so you're bumping out of it, and then when you jump, you should actually land on top of it. Yeah. So we are now walking around on top of it and jumping off it. So you can make your make your staircase, make your platforms, you know, make your bottomless pits. All pretty classic and important. And, uh, and Unity does all these shortcuts where, you know, if you follow the right workflow, then stuff just sort of works. So that's really fun. Now, uh, we're missing something pretty important, which is enemies. So let's make some enemies. I'm going to make a, a new capsule, and we're going to call it enemy one. And uh, put, put this guy over there. Now, your, your basic enemies are going to have really, really simple behavior. Um, a, a, a thing about game design is that we take shortcuts when making games all the time. We take shortcuts as much as we can. So, what you'll find for AI in games is that it's always really, really simple. It's always simpler than you expect it to be. So, the trick here is that we want to create the simplest enemy AI possible that still seems realistic. So, like Mario is a classic example. We've got our, our Goombas, little mushroom dudes, and they just walk back and forth. But they're really scary, right? They're really mean and nasty. So we're gonna make an AI which just makes this enemy walk back and forth. So in your project, go to create a new C sharp script and call it enemy move. And then in it, we're just gonna add this really basic patrol code. And um, pathfinding in games can get a little bit intricate. There's a lot of really cool ways you can do it. Uh, nav meshes is probably my favorite. Um, and when you guys do some, uh, I don't know which courses, but you might look at like D star algorithm and Dijkstra and nav meshes, uh, possibly. Anyone here done A star before? A couple of nods. Okay. A star pathfinding is pretty fun. Um, it's pretty. It, it's fairly straightforward learning how to do it. And I'm not going to do any of that now. We're just going to do a really, really basic patrol script. But um, when you do pathfinding is a very important thing for a lot of enemy AI in games, and so it is something that you can look into and you can sort of learn in your own time. And maybe I'll give a talk on it one day. I don't know. So, as I said here, we're just going to be walking backwards and forwards. So um, we've got a variable called move direction here. This is going to be one if the enemy is moving forwards, and it's going to be minus one if the enemy is moving back. So we've got two directions, and uh, to be super simple. I just picked the x-axis here, and so every update, every like multiple, whatever ones per frame, then uh, we're going to add a little bit onto the position. So um, 
Unity is a little bit awkward the way it does this, but you, you can't actually change the components of the position vector. You have to assign a whole new vector. It's awkward, but whatever. So what we're doing here is we're grabbing the existing position and then setting it to that position plus a new vector. So we've got a zero Y and Z components there. And the X component is just the variable we calculated, the amount we calculated here, which is the move direction. Remember that's one or minus one, so forward or backward. The move rate, which I've set to one, so that's super slow, that's a, a meter a second in game. And then times delta times, so that comes out to one meter a second. And then we need to track how far we've moved so we know when our enemy has to turn around. And so the way we do that is, uh, uh, I mean, like there's, there's much nicer ways to do this, but this is, this is I, I, th I thought that doing it this way was very, very, it's nice and simple and you can really clearly see the logic. So it'll be a little bit more friendly for people who are newer for coding. If you're pretty comfortable with, um, with you know, your linear algebra, with spatial transformations, there's, there's much more concise ways to do this. There's much more flexible, powerful ways to do this. Um, so if move direction is greater than one, remember we're going forwards, then once we've moved our maximum distance, which is five units, then we're going to set the move direction to minus one, and we're going to go backwards. And so again, check in this else here, if move direction is less than one, then if we've moved less than minus five, so you know, remember flipping over, then we're going to change the move direction back to positive. And so what this does is we're going to create an enemy and it's just going to walk backwards and forwards. Now, um, I want to throw a quick question out there. What are the in-game coordinates? If we have this enemy at 0, 0, 0 in the world, can anyone tell me what are the in-game coordinates that the enemy will be patrolling between just based off this code? Does anyone want to take a guess? So remember we're starting at 0, 0, 0, and when the move distance is greater than 5, we turn around. And it's when it's less than negative 5, we turn around. So what, what coordinates will our enemy be patrolling between? It's not a trick question. It's exactly what it looks like. All right, well, let's have a look at it in game. And let, let's, see, let's see what our enemy what our enemy does when they patrol. So we've got our enemy cube here. And um, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to give him something that's really obvious. Uh, let's give him a, 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 a big, I don't know, circle head. Yeah, yeah, that's really menacing. And then let's put the enemy script, enemy move, drag it over. And then uh, let's set his position to zero, zero. So he's going to be flying through the air. I'll just move the player off to the side, so we're not colliding. And then let's see, let's see where he goes to. Okay, so up in the top right, you see his X position. He went up to positive five, now he's going back. And he's now in the negatives. Negative two, negative three, negative four, and he hit negative five and then flipped around. So he's moving between coordinates of X minus five, and then turning around, X positive five, and then turning around. Super basic patrol script. There's nothing intelligent, there's, there's no pathfinding, there's nothing particularly scary. But once you add in your visual effects, your sound effects, your pretty models, your amazing textures, your high definition rendering, all that stuff, your ray tracing, then this really simple code here can actually look really, really smart and intelligent. And so getting into game design, there's all this kind of like player psychology you'll get into. And you'll see that like, they say that horror movies, half of the effect of horror movies is actually in the sound design. Fully half of the experience is in the sound design alone. And it's a similar thing for games as well. When you have that really effective sound design, where you have that really, really striking visuals, great models, whatever, then you can turn something really basic, like this dude just flying back and forward into this really gripping, you know, game of the year, epic sub gameplay. So I'm gonna move him down to ground level, like that. And uh, I guess the second last thing we wanna do is actually, so we've got shooting code, right? So you've got an enemy in game, you can shoot, so we want the shooting to actually kill the enemy. That's kind of the next step, the obvious next step. So let's make our player, let's make a player shoot script. 
So here is here is one I prepared earlier. That is not what I prepared earlier. Um, player shoot. We need to go in there and I uh, know. Oh sorry, we got the enemy enemy die script. Yeah, there it is. So uh, make a new C sharp script in here called enemy die. And then we go into it, and this is where we actually get our. Um, this is where we're going to actually do some collision detection, proper collision detection. So when you're doing your platformer, again, you can take shortcuts with Unity, but I do recommend you move off of the shortcuts and you start overriding a lot of the Unity stuff as soon as you can. Um, use the shortcuts when you need to. Put out a game really quickly, like you're prototyping or you're doing a hackathon. But uh, the thing is, those shortcuts have They'll make a lot of assumptions. They'll they'll do things kind of kind of wackily. So, um, for example, gravity. It, it's a lot nicer if you actually use proper collision detection for gravity, and you can use this for all kinds of stuff as well. So the function we want for here for our shortcut method is on trigger enter, and it's literally just this. So this is actually for those of you who know OO, this is actually a um, method override for uh, for the game object. So this is getting called whenever another collider runs into this object. So what we're doing here is we're grabbing the bullet script of the other object and then uh, if it's not null, we're destroying it. Actually, in, in the 30 seconds spent working this, I actually couldn't get it to work. So I'm just doing this. Whenever it hits send anything, it gets destroyed. And if we and we can do this, and this works just fine in game because in, we, we've actually designed our world here so that there's nothing that's actually it's actually going to patrol into. So this guy's just going to move back and forward in the in the platform and not hit anything. So what that means is as soon as something actually hits it manually, something from the player, then it'll uh, sorry this line here it just destroys itself and it disappears. So let's uh, let's test that. Oh, okay, that didn't work. Um, hang on, I think it's because oh yeah, um, you're gonna make this trigger. That's right. And that should work this time. No. Okay, what's going on? Okay. Oh, hang on. Have I set my? Oh, I haven't put my script on it. Of course. So, uh, so I've got my enemy selected here. Then I have to drag the enemy die script over to actually make that code apply. Duh. Okay. This was working two hours ago. Well, that's basically how you do it anyway. So, um, collision detection can be pretty messy. Um, ordinarily, the proper way to do it is through layers. So you would go up into the layers here and set specific layers for certain triggers. And then you have what's called a bit, a collision bit mask. So um, this is kind of beyond the scope of this tutorial, but uh, it's like a, you, if, if those of you who are probably maybe like second year or late first year, you do a bit shift where you have an integer define for, which is a power of two, which is a, a define for your different kind of things you want to collide, then you bit shift them together, and then you check that, and that's your collision mask. So that's why, that's why you can have certain, that's how you can have certain things trigger when they hit and, uh, and ignore other things using that collision mask. And, um, it's, it's a little bit mathy, but uh, there's, there's tutorials online you can do it. But otherwise, this, this way with a shortcut, you can, um, if, it, if it's working, Yeah, so with, the short, with this kind of shortcut method, it's basically whatever you can get to work. It's obviously, that's not working. Whatever. So, how are we going so far? Are we kind of keeping up with everything? Following along? Our game is basically there. 
Uh, there's heaps of so so yeah, we're pretty much we're pretty much done now. That's all the content I prepared. Um, there's heaps of things you can do with Unity. It's incredibly flexible, and a lot of professional AAA games are actually getting made with Unity these days. So I guess sort of my, my, my closing message is that um, like when Unity first came out, it was kind of dismissed a lot because it's so crude in so many ways. Like you, you do those all those shortcuts, and then there's all kinds of problems with it. Like without movement, right? It's really clunky. It doesn't feel great. It's a little bit messy. And um, and when you actually try to like like that, that collision there is really jarring. And then when you try to actually when you try to actually make it nice, then you got to fight Unity to um, to override the inbuilt stuff. So you know people people kind of dismiss it at first, but there's been so many great AAA games come out now with um, that are made using Unity, which look amazing, play amazing, and um, it's it's really kind of overcome that. And one of the one of the biggest things about Unity, apart from that, is how big the asset store is as well. So again, like being this amazing platform to get um, to to get games out really quickly with um, with sort of like this minimal generalist skill set. Like me, I'm just a coder. I don't do much art or texturing or modeling, or none at all really. But you can quite easily go on the asset store and find all these incredible. Uh, incredible assets, not just models and textures, but also pre-written scripts too. And some of that is available for free, some of that you, you can pay for. And so it's really easy to put out fully function, functional and fully featured games. And like this, even this simple little tutorial here, there's so many things we can add to it. Like we can add, um, probably like add an enemy spawning system would be one of the next things to do after you get enemy deaths working. Uh, and so you like an enemy dies, then it would respawn after 10 seconds. You would also add um, probably enemy attacks would be another great way to expand this as well. So if you walk into the path of the enemy, then it actually causes damage instead of just bouncing off. And so then another thing you could add on then would be a UI like a health bar. And so I added that into the uh, challenge section here. Um, yeah, whatever. So. Uh, uh, So for those of you, and I'll post these slides somewhere, probably the Discord. Um, so if people want to come back and keep working on this or playing with this tutorial code, then uh, the next thing to do is make the enemy attack and cause damage to the player. And so obviously you'll want to have a UI option as well. So we can add really easy text up there to say the player health. We've got a variable for player health. And then you can also add like an image. You get more advanced mode. Add an image for the health bar which shrinks or grows. Another cool, easy expansion would be to add like a, a bullet counter as images. So you have like Halo style ammo counter where there's actually images of bullets showing how many shots you have left instead of just a numerical counter. Okay, well, has anyone got any questions or thoughts or comments about uh, this accelerated platformer tutorial? Yeah, cool. Well, I think we got pizza on the way soon. Yeah. Yeah, so, um, yeah, they've just gone out to grab it now. So if you guys sit tight for a bit, keep working on this until we get here. Cool. Well, I might, uh, I might play with this a little bit, yeah. see if I can get that uh, click injection to work. Yeah. <laughs> so thanks a lot, everyone, for coming. And um, yeah, I'll stick around for pizza. <laughs>